not an ordinary church by the definition of ordinary that we, when we define the church world and what we see in the church world, this is not an ordinary church. We may not have all of the, all of the trappings of ministry that some churches have. We may not have the big bucks, even the big buildings. But God has some extraordinary people that are able to do some extraordinary things because it's extraordinary in this world when you can live holy. And some of my, some of my colleagues that minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, it, it's like they're getting so... They're getting so bad, you know. <clears throat> they've taken holiness out of the gospel. Um, some of our esteemed ministers that have been teaching on television for years, I just want to walk up to some of them and just smack them, you know, just maybe they're asleep or something, just boom, you know. You know how you hit somebody on both cheeks at the same time. Bam, you know, to wake them up or something because it just does not make sense. Sometimes you listen to this 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 message that they're teaching out there now, and it, it makes you nauseous. And you just can't look at it. You have to turn the television. You you can't even listen to it. It just makes you nauseous because whenever you hear a message that takes holiness out of the gospel, when it take when it when it replaces holiness with the privilege to sin. There's something wrong with that message. Jesus didn't come and die in the flesh so we would have the privilege to sin. Come on. God hates sin. So he's not going to take Jesus through all of that just so we can lawfully sin. You know, you, I listen to some of these guys and I'm like, Lord, please help us here. Help us. Help us reach the body of Christ. Because people follow that foolishness. And they, you know, because it makes them comfortable. Someone actually left this ministry here in Jamaica, left this ministry, and their reason for leaving, well, their main reason for leaving was that they said that this ministry is too condemning, that the message here brings about too much condemnation. And I thought about that, and I said, you know, this message only condemns sin. And if you're not in sin, there's no condemnation. The Bible said there's no condemnation for those who walk after the spirit. But if you're walking after the flesh, every time you walk through that door, you're going to feel condemned. And that's just the truth. And so when people leave a ministry because the word condemns their lifestyle, okay. Okay. I don't, I don't have to worry about that. Because that person has to find a relationship with God. They have to find a relationship with God. They don't have that relationship with God if they think God is comfortable with sin. We may get comfortable with sin, but God will never be comfortable with sin. And every time, if you read your Bible in the New Testament, you'll never find a, a time when Jesus was in the presence of sin and didn't acknowledge it. You'll never find it in the whole New Testament where sin was in his presence and he did not acknowledge it. And if he brought such acknowledgement to it, it's because God has condemned sin in the flesh. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want us to be comfortable in the word. Let, let's be comfortable in the word. Doesn't it feel good to be holy? Yeah. It just feels good to be holy. It feels good not to have any condemnation. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. I love waking up holy. I love laying down at night holy. So just in case I don't wake up the next day, I know that I'll be with the Lord. I didn't lay down with, with this sin, all this sin inside of me and iniquity and things like that, that I know God has condemned, that he says when he come, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. So I don't want him to come in the middle of the night, glory to God, while I'm trying to get some sleep. But I went to sleep filthy. Hallelujah. Some people went to bed last night and wake up this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. We don't know where death is. Isn't that right? We don't know. All right. I want us to go a little bit further today. And as I said, 
I'm taking, the, taking my time piecemealing this one, one, one point at a time because when I'm done with it, I want to make sure that you really know and understand this message. It's no good. It's no good to me if you don't really understand it. It's no good if you don't understand it. You must understand this message. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us, we are in chapter 4. We're still putting on the new man. Putting on the new man. Now this is, I think this is the most crucial chapter in this whole teaching from the World Conference. It's the most crucial. I do need someone to transcribe the tape that I did on, um, I think it was two Sundays ago, where I taught on the um, Romans 7, the marriage, being married to another. I need that transcribed, and I need it right away. I need it transcribed so that I can have it in my, on my computer tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, praise the Lord. So that means somebody got to do it tonight, today. Amen? Let's get it done, saints. Let's get it done. Whoever, tra whoever knows I transcribe, let's, let's get it done. I really need that. It brings about a, a great explanation for this. Let's look at this. Um, I want to take you through scriptures. We talked about the, the new man, putting on the new man. Now, we tried to define for you who the new man is. And uh, I think we, we, we did a, I think we did okay in Ocho Rios. They seem to be grasping it, praise the Lord. Bishop French is excited, his people are excited. And um, you know, they're, 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 they're picking up a whole new, uh, you know, a whole new mindset. And, and we're going to be going down there, amen. Uh, getting that, helping, helping Bishop to renovate the ministry both spiritually and naturally. Amen. Um, let's go to page 15. Just to, to, to bring you back up to speed where we were. I want to point out some, 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 some uh, verses here, some verses of scripture. St. John, the 17th chapter, for the benefit of those who don't have a study guide. St. John uh, 17 and 20. Let's set the stage here again. Can we give Pastor a microphone, please? Can we turn on his mic? St. John 17, uh -huh. reading from verse 20. Uh -huh. Neither pray I for these alone, uh -huh. but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now this sets the stage for the prayer that Jesus is praying. He's praying not only for the, di the disciples, the 12 that he chose, that God gave him, really. God gave them to him. And uh, he's not only praying for them, but he's also praying for those that are going to believe on him based upon what they preach. And we're, we're those people. You know, everyone that has received Christ since, uh, since the resurrection of Jesus Christ had to receive him by the preaching of the word that the apostles preach. Hello? Amen. The apostles were the one that were left in charge of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they handed that gospel down to the church. I hope that um, I hope that we are intelligent, just ordinarily intelligent enough to discern what God is doing and what God is saying. I hope that we're intelligent enough to realize that we have we have come to something that we have not, uh, uh, to a place that we have never been before. We have come to a place in understanding. That's, that's where we've come. Message hasn't changed. It's been, it's, it has been increased, but the foundation was sure. But God said we didn't understand. And what he has done has brought us 
understanding. He has brought us back into understanding or brought us to understanding of what salvation really is. And that is so precious. That it has excited me. That has, uh, as I was uh, sharing with uh, Pastor George, it's, it's phenomenal to me. It's, a, it's <laughs> I can't even find words to explain how I feel about that. Because we're, we're talking about something, and this is no put down on anybody or anything, because everything that is done uh, that is good is done by God. God. God is the one that ministers through me or you, uh, you know, and um, affects his people. But it's just amazing. I've, you know, I've known God for over 50 years, and I have never, ever heard salvation the way God has explained it to us. And I've, I've, and we've been reading these scriptures for years. We've been teaching them for years. But when the Lord says, I'm going to give you understanding, when the Lord says, I'm going to give you understanding, you know what that tells me? That, 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 that veil that we talk about is still over the word until God reveals it. Amen. You can read this. You can read this with your natural understanding and never understand it. Never understand it. And you can read it. With, you can read it with the spirit and not understand not understand, understand the things that have been veiled god has to unveil them even when you're reading with the spirit god has to take you to the deepness and the depths of his word because it's a mystery and he said the mystery was hidden in him and so if there's anything going on in your life or any mindset that you have that is unlike him or contrary to him and his purpose and his plan, you'll never see the mystery. You'll never see it because only the pure in heart can see God. And the mystery is hidden in God. It's hidden in God. And you know what, what, what really qualifies us for the mystery? You got to love people. And you got, you, got to want, you got to want to know this truth for reasons other than that it, it makes you unique. Among your peers. You can't just want to know this so you can minister something that other people don't know. You know, there's some people that are like that. They just want to, they want to know the truth because they, you know, other people around them in their territory sphere of influence may not know what they know. And they want to, to have that uniqueness among those people. You can't want to know this for that reason. You got to want to know God because you want to be what God has ordained us to be. Not just to gain knowledge. Come on, are you hearing God? And so only the pure in heart can see this because this mystery is hidden in God. It's in God, and you got to be in God. You can't be uh, wrestling, wrestling with carnal things or things that are not pertaining to God and get this. You, it just simply it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And, and what's dangerous, this, what, what really frightens me, this really frightens me. I've been in, I've been, I've been, ministering for the Lord a long time, saints. A long time. I've been ministering, I've been preaching over 40 years. And as prophet has said, God is more than just my God. God is my friend. And I know God. Some people know of God. But like Moses knew God, because he dealt with, God dealt with him face to face. I know God because God has dealt with me face to face. And that's no braggadocious or nothing. That's just the truth. God causes me to know. He, he makes me to know. I don't deserve it. I don't know why that, you know, he took a bean picker out of the bean field and, and decided to give her the revelation of Christ. I don't know. All I know is he did. And, and I know that my whole existence is to pass it on to the church. It's not about bigging me up. It's not about me being no celebrity and all of that because God is not raising up celebrities. He's raising up servants. And so it's not about that. It's about his purpose and his plan. But I know God and what's dangerous now, I tell you what's dangerous. It is dangerous for those of you, as she said, in this extraordinary position that God has placed you in. You're in an extraordinary place because God has made it extraordinary, because he has visited it. He has visited it, and he has visited us. 
and he has said things to us that we've never heard before. I can raise my hand and say I haven't. God is saying things to us that we have never heard, and they're right in the Bible. They're right in the scriptures. There's, there's nothing new. We haven't come up with a new Bible. They're right in the, in the scriptures. And what's so phenomenal about it, and this is what's judging people, this is the judgment. Do you know when God came and spoke to Noah, he said the world was wicked. Didn't he say that? He said the world was wicked and it grieved him that he had ever created man. Now, he was so angry, he wanted to just destroy man. He was just grieved. But God came and talked to one man. And that man that God talked to in a wicked world believed him. He believed God. He believed God. And because he believed God, it condemned everybody else. When he heard God, he started preaching. The Bible said he preached 120 years. That's how long it took him to build the ark. And he preached to those souls. Because he believed God, he had had this visitation from the Lord. And he tried to pass that visitation on. Hallelujah. Praise him in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal it. Amen. The, because he had, because he had, um, glory. <laughs> because he believed God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody in the world was condemned. Everybody. Somebody say everybody. everybody. Everybody in the world was condemned because he believed God. Now that right there, the same principle applies today. The same principle applies today. God has given us a truth. He has visited us, and, and the, the instruction was to pass it down to the body of Christ. Give this word to the body. Give this mystery to the body. And it's dangerous. And see, when this mystery is coming forth, how many know it's coming forth with an anointing? And the, the, the evidence of God's position on this thing, the evidence of it is that I have, I have never seen anything like it. I have sat down in World Conference, and since I've been back from World Conference, preaching this word, I've seen you change. I've seen many of you change right before my eyes. You're just different people. <laughs> you definitely, glory to God. Hallelujah. Clifton has changed, eh? There's something new about him. He's take, finally, we, I think we broke the flesh barrier. <laughs> Glory to God. God has broken that flesh barrier. George Leverage, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Colleen Leverage. Leverage. Carlene Leverage. <laughs> Colleen. These people are preaching off the chain. Glory to God. They, and they, their disposition has changed. It has changed. And many of you, whose names I may not be calling, have changed because of what you're hearing. You, 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 it is, and you're doing it momentarily. It's not taking forever. It's just like, whoa. And um, I saw it happen at World Conference, and I'm seeing it happen here. Now, you know what that does? That judges everybody. That puts judgment on everybody that's hearing this. Because if it'll change one, it can change all. Hello? So be mindful of that. Be not mindful of that. You don't want to enter into that judgment. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right. Let's look at something here. Glory to God. And remember, if you feel condemned, it's because you're in sin. Amen. There's no condemnation for those who, 
who walk in holiness. So if you feel any condemnation from this message, it's because you're in sin. Amen? Um, I'm so glad to see you. I gave instructions concerning you. I need to see you glued to that table. I'm talking to you. You read my lips. Glued. This is a season for all leaders to grab a hold of this. This is a season for all leaders. You can't lead in this ministry if you don't get this word. You cannot. It's impossible anymore. It's impossible. I was going through, through my, my membership and leadership list and looking at it. And, and we're doing a thorough examination of our leadership. You can't lead, you can't lead except we agree. We got to agree with God. And this is what God is saying. I don't care what the world is saying. And I don't care what every preacher in the world is saying. I know what God is saying. And I'm going to preach what God is saying. Amen? Because I've seen the fruit of what God is saying. Because the, the Bible tells me that his intent, his purpose, his eternal purpose is to show principalities and powers, his manifold wisdom by using the church. And what I see out there called church, God is not putting that on display for principalities and powers. That's, a, that's an embarrassment to him. God is raising up righteousness and holiness. Are y'all hearing God? So this is a season now. This is a season for all... My leaders, if, we, if, if, if you're a leader in this ministry, glory to God, and you know, we have, we, you know, we have some people that have resigned from leadership, but if you're a leader in this ministry, glory to God, and, we be, and you believe this message, you, it's going to have to manifest now. It's got to manifest because you can't change. You can't change your church. You can't, you can't uh, change people except with the truth. And see, God's truth is always progressive. It's progressive. And if you don't get this, what are you going to do in the next few months when he adds to it? Because he always adds to it. Always. God is progressive. Isn't that right? Glory to God. So, you know, some of you have backed up from leadership and some of you are like, I don't know. Glory to God. This is not the time for, I don't know. This is not the time for that. Even if you don't like me, listen to me. Hello, if you got a problem with Mary Banks, exit out and listen to what she's saying. Because God is using this vessel to speak to us. I am listening to God. I am listening to God. I, glory to God. So all of us got to listen now. We got to listen to what God is saying. And that's what we got to embrace. And, and God did something at the World Conference. He showed us the power of this message and how it can change people right on the spot. I got pastors that's calling me saying, Doc, my church is not the same. My church is not the same. It has changed my church. People have changed. My son was calling me and said, he said his whole leadership staff is totally different. Glory to God. Say so his, his leadership is just totally different now. Glory to God. That's the power of the word. That's the power of the message. Glory to God. So if you, you know, if, if, if this is a time to run and embrace. Run. Don't be... You know, I was sharing with somebody uh, last night that it's so easy now to become a relic. It's, it's easy now. See, because, you, you, know, you, you, you know, we talked about pivotal points. Amen. This is one of those pivotal points. This is where you're either going to step up or step out. And, and you'll be put on that wall, you know, that oar, that oar that used to row the canoe. You, you go on a big steamship, go on a big cruise ship. They got it up there on the wall now. It can't do anything for that, <laughs> for that, cruise, that cruise ship. It won't move it now. You get that oar, what are you going to, you can't even reach the water with, <laughs> with that oar on that cruise ship. It's, it's of no value to the ship. So no matter how good you can teach, no matter how good you can preach, if you don't have the substance, this is your tool right here. If you don't have the substance that God is giving you to teach, you have no value. You can't change nobody. You can't, you can't bring people to Christ. This word brings people to Christ. Hello. It brought us. It gave us a deeper revelation of Christ and a deeper revelation of ourselves. 
Isn't that right? Amen. I'm going to take you through some scriptures today. I'm just going to go through some scriptures to make sure you got the meaning of them. Okay? I want to, I want to make sure that you have the meaning of these scriptures. We've talked about uh, putting on the new man several times, but now I want to make sure that you understand certain scriptures that are relative to this new man. Let's, let's go with, um, the, are we in St. John 17? He said that he prayed for them. He's praying for us, just like he prayed for the disciples. He says, not only for them, but I'm praying for those that will believe on me through their word. Is that right? Yep. Then in the 21st uh, verse, he says, that they all may be one, mm -hmm. as thou, Father, art in me, mm -hmm. and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, mm -hmm. that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And now, now, this is important. This is important because this has more meaning than we previously thought. He says... He says, now, Father, now, I want you to make them one. I'm in them and they're in, in us, you know. We're in them and they're in us. And I want you to do that so the world will know that you sent me. Now, previously, when we ministered this, we ministered this from the perspective of being one with God in the spirit. That's where we ministered this at being one with God in the Spirit. And we all agree that by the Holy Ghost, we are made one with God. Isn't that right? By the Holy Ghost, we're made one with God. But what God is saying is, hold it. You, you, you left out something. You didn't connect the dots. You didn't connect the dots. And I want us to, to make sure we connect them this morning. I want you to look in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And I think it's in the book, yeah, Ephesians 5 and 30. It's on page 18 in the book. We're going to be jumping around in here. Ephesians 5 and 30. Mm -hmm. For we are members of his body, mm -hmm. of his flesh, Mm -hmm. And of his bones. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that the church does not preach. Ministers generally do not minister this as it appears here. And I want to make sure we don't overlook it. I want to make sure we understand it. Because what this scripture does is removes all false doctrines about dual nature and all of that stuff. It says here, we are members of his body, of his what? Flesh and of his bones. Now, we are members of his body, of his flesh and his bone. Now, the Bible says the man Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. Doesn't scripture tell us that? That man that was walking the earth, the one that was walking the earth here, is seated at the right hand of God. So that body, that particular body, is up in heaven somewhere. Amen? But now the scripture says Jesus came back. He said, he said, if I don't go, he said, he said I'm, I'm leaving, but my father and I will come back and sup with you. So Jesus came back in the form of what? The Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It contains the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen? It's the whole Godhead. We have, what the Bible said, we have the Godhead bodily. Amen? So now, Jesus comes back in the Holy Ghost. The Father comes back in the Holy Ghost. Is that right? So now he says, they are in us and we're in them. Right? Hello? Now, look at that. We're in him or in them. So how do we get in them? Where are we? We're where? We're in the Holy Ghost. 
That's us and them. Right? He said, didn't you just read that in, in the 17th chapter of St. John? It says, he said, make them one, right? As thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, and they also may be one where? In us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So we are one in them. And how do we get to be one in them? By being placed in the Holy Ghost. Is that right? God placed us in the Holy Ghost. All right, so now that makes us one in them. But now how, is they, how are they going to be one in us? We didn't leave there. We didn't leave the spirit and go and deal with the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. See, see there are some preachers who want to run, may, may, may want to run me out of town on a rail for preaching such a thing, for even suggesting such a thing. But I got to preach what the Bible says. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 30 that we are members of his what? Body. His body. Now let's make sure we understand that. I don't, want, I don't want us to gloss over this because this is so crucial to understanding salvation. We got to see what the scriptures are really talking about. And, and, if, and if we get this foundation right here, everything else will just make so much sense. Isn't your New Testament coming alive now? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just like it. Whoa. It's jumping up off the pages now. Let's look at this. We are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Now, this has to do with the, the answer to the prayer that Jesus prayed in the 17th chapter of St. John. He said, make them one in us. They're one in us, and we will be in them. Hello? So now, where is he at in us? We know we're in him, but where, where does he show up in us at? Where does this scripture, how is this scripture fulfilled in us? Where does God and Jesus show up in us at? Hmm? Where? In the body. He shows up in the body. Now watch this. But now, okay, we often say Christ is in me. We say that. We don't have no problem saying that, right? We, we often say that. We say, but we, we don't consider what that really means. If he's in you, where is he? He's in your body. See, we act as if he was in our soul. No, our soul is in him. Come on, you see what I'm saying? We acted as if, the, if God and Jesus, the Holy Ghost, was in our soul. That's what we, we, it, we it's almost, we didn't say that, but that's how we, that's the connotation we had. But he's not. Our soul is in him. In him we live and move and have our being. Is that right? In him we live and move and have our being. Our being is our soul, right? So the soul is in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is not in the soul. The soul is in the Holy Ghost because the Bible said that we have been baptized into him. He didn't, wasn't baptized into, into our soul. Our soul was baptized into him. So that fulfills one part of that scripture, Ricky. Pastor Ricky, that, that, that one part of that scripture is fulfilled. We have been baptized into the Holy Ghost. But what about the other part? Where is it that he is in us? He said that they may be in us, one in us. Well, you got to connect the darts. We go here to Ephesians 5. It says we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Wait a minute, hold it. His body is up there seated next to God. Okay? But now let's connect these dots here. Let's go to Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15 chapter. Let me see if I got it in the book here. I don't, I don't think I have it in here. Not in this particular chapter of the book. but So we can go straight to the Bible with it. Um, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. 
and all right uh sam read the pastor sam read the um uh, <laughs> Paul just, you know, he just summed up. Look at the, 20, the 33rd verse. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Uh -huh. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Be quiet. Shut your mouth. If you don't know what you're talking about, just hush. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying here. If you don't know what you're talking about, you just need to be quiet. Be quiet, because you can get in trouble. You can get in trouble with God. Debating or disputing truth. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand it, hush. Mm -hmm. And let God explain it to you. Amen. Don't, don't criticize it. Don't uh, deny it. Don't put it over here in a category of... of um, Fallacy, make sure that you know what you're talking about and treat the truth preciously. Treat it preciously. Treat it with, with, as, as, as being very precious because I have known so many people. I've known some very prominent ministers that, that don't have ministry today. Because they fought the word of God. You cannot fight this truth and survive. Because this is the one thing that will turn on you and fight back. That's why God told us not to fight one another. That word of God will protect itself. God protects his word. Didn't he say that? He watches over his word. Amen. The watchers watch over his word. God's word is protected all the way around. So it doesn't. Is is not wise to to attack the word of God, especially when you don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Just just listen. Be be slow to speak, quick to to hear. Listen. Listen to what God is saying. All right. Read on. Awake to righteousness, and sin not. No. Wait a minute. You mean that? Well, I just wanted to point out. There's another. There's a scripture right there, saints, that said, "Don't sin." There's a scripture here that said, don't sin now. Hello? Amen. So if someone telling you that it's okay to sin, you found another scripture here in this Bible that says, awake to what? Righteousness. Righteousness and do what? Sin not. So if, if, if we couldn't live sinless, he wouldn't, and he wouldn't require it. He wouldn't demand it. Read on. For some have not the knowledge of God... I speak this to your shame. Mm -hmm. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Uh-huh. See, you know, it's just amazing to me that God, has, that God has given us the revelation of salvation here. And now, I, and now when I read Paul, I'm like, he had a handle on this thing. Paul... Paul had a, Peter acknowledged that Paul had a revelation that the, other, the, the others didn't have. Whee! Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. He, he had a revelation. He understood. And saints, I can't even explain this. I can't explain it. I, I, I don't have words to explain it. But I see salvation. Amen. I see it. Like I've never seen it before, and it's because it was revealed to me mm. by God. Amen. It was revealed. And if Peter was hanging around here, Peter would say, Dr. Banks preached some things that's hard to be understood. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you said about Paul. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Because these things have to be revealed by God. Amen. They have to be revealed by God. And, and, when, and, and that's why... Paul was the latecomer, but Paul, was, Paul was, was right on time. Because who did God use to write 14 books of the Bible? 
who did God use to, to, to write the revelation? Paul. Paul wrote to the church because he had the revelation of salvation. He understood it. Not that the other guys didn't have it, but he understood the depths of Christ in the church. He understood Christ's presence in the church or in a body of people. He understood that more than the rest of them did. That's why Paul didn't have a problem with circumcision. Paul was the one that preached there's no gender in, in Christ. There's no male, there's no female, there's no bond, no free, no Jew, no Greek. Paul preached that. Peter didn't preach that. Paul preached that. These guys were with Jesus from the very beginning. Paul came in lately. But God opened his eyes to the truth because he had no private agenda. He wasn't prejudiced. He had no private agenda. Once he met God, that was it. Whatever you say, Lord, that's what I'm going to preach. And I don't care who like it or who don't like it. And that's why when he went down there to Antioch and, and, and Peter had taken the church off course, Paul said, Paul said, you, 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 you guys are, you know, you, you, you to blame, Peter. You got the whole church off course here. You got the whole church off course. Glory to God. And so that's, that's what happens when you get a revelation from God. You have to tell it. Even though some people may not embrace it, everybody's not going to embrace it. Do you, don't you know every preacher is not going to embrace this? But you got to tell it. It's the truth. You got to tell it. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, boy, Paul had, he had a handle on this. And, and now that God has given us the revelation, we can understand this handle he had here. Watch, watch this here. He said, some of you, some of you, don't, you don't have no knowledge of God. Now, see, I say that, people say I'm arrogant. But it's just the truth. I can listen to people talk. I can listen to preachers talk and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know God. You don't know God. You just don't, I'm, I'm not, not to be arrogant. But it's just the truth. The, listening to your conversation, you do not know God. You don't, you don't, you don't know this God of the script. You know? I've, I've listened to my colleague, Brother Dollar, glory to God. He don't know the God of the script. I don't care if he got 10 million people following him. He don't know the God of the script. He don't know this God. That's just the truth. I listen to these, to, to, and I love him. I love these guys. I tell you, I love them. Glory to God. I was listening to, to, the, to, the, to the man of man. Glory to God. You don't know God. Every other scripture is spiritualized. Don't know God. Don't know the God of the script. Some of you don't have knowledge. You say, well, Dr. Man, you shouldn't say things like that. Well, Paul identified. He identified false doctrines and the people that were preaching them. He did. He identified false doctrines and people that, what, what am I supposed to do? I'm not supposed to say that's a false doctrine. It is a false doctrine. You know why I'm the one supposed to say it? I'm one of the ones that's supposed to say it because apostles are contenders for the faith. We are supposed to contend for the faith and, and to preserve that common gospel that was delivered unto the saints of old. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. The Bible said they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. If I hear something that's not the apostles' doctrine, I'm supposed to say that's not the apostolic doctrine. That's just not it. It's outside of the boundaries of the faith. The apostolic doctrine sets the boundaries of the faith. Hello? And if, you, if, and if you're endowed with all of this, you don't need an apostle. Amen. Amen. Hello? Amen. Glory to God. There's no such thing as apostolic order if, if, if we're not going to walk in it. Are, are you working with me? Glory to God. So he said, I speak this to your shame. Now, read that 35th verse. But some man will say, mm -hmm. how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? See, I want you to connect these dots. How is the dead raised and what body do they come up with? Mm -hmm. Thou fool, that which thou sowest. Thou what? Fool. You mean Paul called somebody a fool? <laughs> thou <laughs> fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. That which you plant, that seed that is planted, before it can produce a plant, it, the seed must die. Is that true? Amen. That's true in the natural. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's doing. He's taking a, nat a natural thing here and making an analogy of his own death, of Paul's, of jo um, Jesus' death. He's saying the seed had to go in the earth, it had to die before it could produce the fruit. Now read this next verse. 
and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body shall be, but bear grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Mm -hmm. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Okay. Now, is Jesus not the seed that was planted in the earth? Amen. He's not, isn't he the seed that was planted in the earth? Amen. And what is he saying here? He's saying that when you plant the seed, glory to God, when, when, the, when the fruit come up or the plant comes up, it's not going to look like the seed. A stalk of corn doesn't look like the, 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 the grain of corn. Mm -mm. It's a whole stalk with a whole lot of seeds on it, grains of corn on it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying here. So he's saying now, this body that was planted called Jesus, it produced... The fruit that it produced doesn't look like it. You plant an apple seed, the, the tree doesn't look anything like that seed. You plant a, 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 the seed from a peach, that big thing inside of that peach. That's the seed, isn't it? You plant that and a big tree come up. That doesn't look like that seed. I, you wouldn't even know what that seed looked like. Come on. If you didn't open the fruit, you'd never know what a peach seed looked like. Isn't that right? So you look at the tree, you don't see the seed. It's not, it doesn't look like the body that you planted. It produces a different, <laughs> y'all, y'all hearing God. Amen. And so that's what he's saying here. Connect these dots. Jesus was planted in the earth, but now that he's resurrected. Okay, let's, we got three scriptures to connect here. The first one he read, he said, Father, make them one as we are one. I'm in here, I'm, you know, we're. They're, they're in us, and we're in them. Is that what he's saying? So God is going to be in us, and we're in God. So the first part of that was fulfilled when they baptized us in the Holy Ghost. They put our soul in the Holy Ghost. So that part was fulfilled. So now what about them being in us? He's saying here that Jesus was planted when he, when he was resurrected, he doesn't look the same anymore. His body looks like Ephesians 5 and 30. This is what his body looks like now. It, we are the members of his what? In other words, that's another say, we are his body now. Are we not the body of Christ? We're his body. Oh, Lord. If you just, hold, if you just grab a hold of that, all this other foolishness just won't make sense. It'll sound like foolishness. We are his body. These are his bones. This is his flesh. Woo-wee! This is, this is his bone. These are his bones. And this is his flesh. This is what the body of Christ looks like now. Looks like Kwame. Looks like me. Looks, looks like Lona. Looks like Sam. Looks like Nars. This is what Jesus looks like now. Look at all of us. This is his body. Come on. This is his body. So now the other part of that scripture is fulfilled. He's in us. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, before he got in us, he had to take this, the, the soul out of the flesh and put it in the spirit. When the soul comes out of the flesh, the body dies. The soul that sinneth must die. So the body is dead, right? Hello? Soul died, but the soul died in Christ's death. It was baptized into Christ's death. Didn't the scripture tell us that in Romans 6? Ah, somebody asked me, did the soul die? Yes, it did. It was baptized into Christ's death. It took on the death of Christ, therefore it was resurrected with him. Good gracious, hallelujah. Isn't that just wonderful? Okay, but now the body. Wait a minute now. The body that the man was in. Let's look at Romans 6 again. Somewhere he says... Um, 
Look at Romans 6 and 6. What does that say? Romans 6 and 6. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Who is the old man? Who is the, who is the old man? Who is the old man? The unregenerated man. The unregenerated man, the one that wasn't saved, it was his body. Mm -hmm. The old man was our body. Come on, are you hearing God? Amen. The old man was our body. Now he's saying that body was crucified with Christ. When you took the soul out of the flesh and placed it inside of the spirit, the body died. Just like the soul was baptized into his death, now the body becomes a partaker of that atonement. Come on, are you hearing me? Amen. So it's even as if the body died on that cross as well. Amen? It becomes a partaker at one with the death of Jesus Christ. Are you working with me? So now that the body, the body dies, but now it's, now the Holy Ghost comes back in the body. Same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now quickens this Mortal. Mortal. That means our body. But notice what it said here. It said it died. Read, read that verse. Knowing this, that your old man is crucified with Christ. That what? That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Oh, wow. So the body of sin was destroyed. That means that this natural body actually died. That's the destruction. It died. It died. It D-I-E-D. Died. It died. Amen? It died. So when it died now, the body of sin, because it was a body of sin. Is that right? Amen. How else did we sin? Did not we use our body to sin? Amen. So the body of sin was destroyed. Now, when something is destroyed, it's lifeless, doesn't feel anything, doesn't have any emotion, doesn't have any desires. Hello, right? It doesn't have any, it's, 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 it's free from sin and the penalty of sin. Hello? So this body now doesn't have, you take the spirit out of the body, it doesn't have any emotion. It doesn't want anything. You go to that coffin when you go to a funeral, ask that man, do he want anything? He doesn't, he doesn't even hear you. He can't hear you. He doesn't know anything. He don't want anything. He don't even know anything. The Bible says that dead knoweth nothing of this world. That's the scripture. So this body of sin is destroyed. It doesn't exist anymore. Oh, it doesn't exist anymore. Wow. It's dead. But then Jesus said, Father, make them one, as we are one. I'm not only in you, but you're in me. So that means that in order to fulfill that, Jesus and God got to get in that body. Mm. He got to get in that body. Well, I think, we, I think we can agree that he did get in it, because if he didn't get in it, why would he call it the temple of the Holy Ghost? Why would he say things like the body belongs to God? Why would he say things like when a man uh, sinned, the sin of fornication, he joined the members of Christ to a harlot and he sins against his own body. If the body is sinful, then why when we sin, we sin against it? Oh yeah, this is liberating. Yeah, this is liberating. Because what this says is stop blaming your flesh for your lust. Your soul creates lust. You create it by peeping around, peeping around the Holy Ghost and looking into the world and wanting to experience some of the stuff that you experience when the body belonged to you. Now you want to usurp authority over God's body and use it to experience some lust again. So you create lust. The Bible says any man now is tempted. He's drawn away by his own lust. Before Jesus said, you're of your father the devil and his lust you'll do. But now he says if you sin now after being born again, 
You're drawn away by your own lust. You got to create it. You got to do the same thing the devil did. He was created perfect until the day he decided he's going to exalt his throne above that of God. He was perfect, but he started to think his way into sin. Come on, somebody. He, he put iniquity in his heart, and that's what we do. We now, the body, so the body is not hanging around saying, Oh, I want to I wanna go and experience something. Oh, I want to go and experience fornication. I want to lie. I want to cheat. I want to steal. Oh, I miss stealing so bad. Oh, my hands are itching to steal. That's not the body. That's, the body's not doing that. The body's not saying, Oh, I miss fornication. I want to go fornicate. Oh, ooh, I miss being a false witness. Oh, I miss lying. I miss stealing. You think the body is doing that? You think the body is craving all that stuff? How is it possible for the body to crave sin when nobody is in the body but Jesus? See, see, I want us set free here. I want us liberated. I want us to know, no, 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 the devil didn't make me do it. I want us to know the flesh didn't make me do it. How, tell me, explain to me, if the body now belongs to God, if it's the temple of the Holy Ghost, if God says the body is holy, if God says through the Apostle Paul that the body can be preserved blameless hmm, until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, that means it's sinless. That means it's sinless and it can remain sinless. Now, let's connect these dots. I'm going to say this, and I want you to embrace it with all your being. Ephesians 2 and 15. Let's connect this dot. What did it say, Pastor? Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Now, this is something that we neglected to see here. He made in himself one new man. No more Jew, no more Greek, no more bond, no more free, no more male. No more female. All is who? Christ. All right? He made us one new man in himself. Now, in what self? Having abolished it in his what? Flesh. In his flesh. Now, look at this. Back up here. Look in St. Saint, Saint John 17. Page 15 for you, Pastor. Um. Verses 1 and 2. Let's connect these dots here. St. John 17 mm -hmm. and 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. The hour. The hour. The hour. <laughs> the hour? <laughs> okay, the hour has come. <laughs> The hour is come, <laughs> glorify thy son, that thy son may also, that thy son also may glorify thee. Father, the time has come. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't understand what hour means, <laughs> it's, the, it's the time, the time has come <laughs> for you to glorify your son. That thy son may glorify thee. I want you to connect these dots here. Let's keep these dots connected. I want you to glorify me so that I can glorify you. Isn't that what he's saying? Okay, read the next verse, Pastor. 
as thou hast given him power over all flesh, mm -hmm. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay. What, what is the significance of that? You have given me power over all flesh. Jesus had power over everything before he ever came to earth. Glory to God. So what is he talking about now? Thou has given me power over all flesh. Connect the dots with Ephesians 5 and 30. We are the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. In other words, he's saying, fulfill this prayer, Father. Make me that eternal spirit again. Because I'm coming to you. Now, I want us to come back and get in them. Now, when we get in them, now they're going to be the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Their body is going to be my body now. I paid for it with my own blood. Bought and paid for. So now their body is the body of Christ. And notice what he said, though. He said, you have given me power over all flesh. So there's nothing. There's no spirit of iniquity. There's no devil. There's nothing in there, in that body, but Jesus. And there's nothing that can get in that body, but Jesus. That's why it's impossible for a saint, a real saint, saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, to be demon possessed. You cannot. God is not giving up possession of his body on one half of it and let a demon live on the other half. That doesn't even make sense. Come on, somebody. Because to be demon-possessed means possession. He possesses that flesh. Jesus said, it belongs to me. Hello, body belongs to God. So now he's saying, I have, you, you, bless me, give me the glory that I had with you. I'm going to get in those bodies. That once belonged to them, but they belong to me now. And guess what? I've got power over flesh. There's not going to be any evil concupiscence working in this body now. There's not going to be the law of sin and death working in the members. There's not going to be the motions of sin working in the members of their body now. Because I am going to live in those bodies. Are y'all hearing me? So if Jesus, now wait a minute, is it possible that Jesus can come into the body and declare that it is his, declare that it is holy, declare that it belongs to God, and it still have another nature? It has dual nature. In order for it to have dual nature, both of them got to be in it. Jesus and Satan. Equally. Dual. That dual means two. Hello? So now, now is, is, is the devil there? Uh, is, did he come back into this flesh with Jesus? Wait a minute now. I saw something. I don't know where it says. It's probably over here in Hebrew somewhere. Let's see. Um... I saw something. Oh, dear. Well, where is the scripture? Maybe it's in, maybe, oh, that's the wrong one I'm thinking about. Um, I read a scripture somewhere. I know it's in the Bible. That says, ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Is that in the Bible? Is it in Romans? Oh. Romans 8, what? In 15? What does it say? For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Again! I got him out. He's gone. And he's not coming back. 
You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. What is the fear? What would the fear come from? What would, what, what, what would, what would cause me to fear? Fear that he's going to make me sin again. Come on, because I was under captivity. Come on. He, he let, <laughs> Jesus said it was his lust I did. It was the spirit of the devil's lust that I did. I was under bondage. He said, you have not received that spirit again. Wait a minute. Now, who are you going to believe? You're going to believe, you're going to believe the preacher that says you got dual nature? Or are you going to believe the Bible that says you did not receive that spirit again? Huh? You're going to, which one you choose to believe? The Bible. I choose to believe the Bible. The Bible says he didn't come back again. Come on. Are y'all hearing God? Hmm? I don't have to fear now. That's what he said. I don't have to fear. I, I don't have to worry about the motions of sin cr causing me to crave sin in my flesh anymore because he's not there. He's not there. Woo! That's why the gospel is called the good news. Hallelujah. Doesn't that make us happy? That we know that the devil can't make us sin? Come on. So. 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 This was my body. But Jesus got in him. He got in my body. He's in my body, in my body, in my body. The old people used to say, my body belongs to God. My whole body belongs to God. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So now, Jesus is in this body. It used to be the body of sin. But now it has died and been resurrected, been quickened by the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is in my body. He's in my body. I'm the soul. That's my body that used to belong to me. But now that he done died and paid for it and got in it, it's his. And now he calls it the body of Christ. He said there's no spirit of bondage in it. So that means no evil concupiscence, no motions of sin, no law of sin and death. So there's something different about my body now. It's a new man. It's a new man. A brand new man. Because he said, I did this in the flesh. I abolished that wall of petition in the flesh. He said, so when you look at this body now, he's because, see, the soul is in the Holy Ghost. Isn't my soul in the Holy Ghost? So the, when the soul gets in here, he come in to obey. This body belongs to Christ. Why doesn't it crave sin anymore? Because it has the mind of Christ. Hello. Woo -wee! You thought it had your brain running it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It has the mind of Christ. It has the mind of Christ. It's a new man. Yeah. Now the scripture tell me put him on. Isn't, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Doesn't the scripture say it's somewhere in the Bible. Let's see if we can find it. Because I, I know these preachers are going to nail me to the wall if I don't find it. Or Ephesians, you found it. I'm so glad I, I can get out of trouble here. Amen. Ephesians 4. Okay, let's go with Ephesians 1 first. 4 and 24. What does it say, Pastor? Read um, and 
uh -huh. and that he and that you put on the new man, uh -huh. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. <laughs> put on this new man. So soul, soul, put on this new man here. This is not the body of sin anymore. This body now is created in righteousness after the image of him who created him. This is Jesus again. This is Jesus again walking the earth. Glory to God. He said, now put him on. In other words, agree with him. Just, just agree with him. Glory to God. This body does not crave sin. It doesn't want to sin. Glory to God. And he said, now when? Come here, baby. Come right out there. Right out there. Right there, old harlot. <laughs> when you take this body, because I want to, I want to be a lesbian. So I'm going to take this body and, ex and experience. No, my body's a man. No, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my body's a man, so I got to be fornication here. Okay. All right. When you join this body, when I decide to join this body to this harlot here, <laughs> the Bible says I'm sinning against my body. If I'm sinning against my body, that means my body didn't want to do this. Oh, come on, say, that is so good. That means my body, my body wasn't over here. My body wasn't over here. So come out some, baby, a little bit. Right there. My body wasn't over here saying, ooh, I want to go, I want to go. Ooh, I want to say, no. It was the soul saying, ooh, I remember. I want to experience this. I want to experience fornication. I remember how it felt, and I'm going to use Jesus' body to do it. I'm going to use the body of Christ. I'm going to take his members, his flesh, and his bone, and I'm going to join it to a harlot. And he said, every sin you commit is outside the body, but the sin of fornication, he said, you sin against your own body. So if I'm sinning against the body, then that means the body wasn't privy to this. The body didn't want to do this. That means I can't blame the body. It means that I usurped authority, and I took the members of Christ and did what I wanted to do with them. Come on. And that's why when I'm done, this body feels so unclean. It just, it, it, the, the body feels so unclean. The condemnation comes. Why? It didn't, it the body didn't want to do that. I forced it into sin. Are y'all hearing God? Are you hearing God? He said, this, this body here is renewed in righteousness. It has Christ living in it. Ooh, this here going to get us in trouble, Saint. But it's got Christ living in it. But you know what it's going to do? It's going to stop us from sinning. Because we, we're running out of excuses now. We're running out of people to blame. We, the last culprit was the body, and God taking away that now. He said, this body don't want to sin. You the one want to sin, soul. Now, let's connect these dots. Thank you. Let's connect these dots. Hold it, hold it, body. Don't you, don't you go nowhere. Let's connect these dots. Hallelujah. Let's see here. All right, go to Ephesians 4. Let's read this so we'll have it on tape. Ephesians 4 and... Twenty-four. 
Ephesians. Did we just read that? Okay, there's another one. That's not the one I want. There's another one here. Hmm? Colossians? Okay. Take me to Colossians what? Yes, 3. Colossians 3 is on in page 19 in your in your book. 3 and 10. Uh look at the ninth verse. Start at the ninth verse. Okay. Colossians 3 verse 9. Uh-huh. Lie not one to another. Uh-huh. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Oh, we put him off. What do you mean we put him off? It's no longer bad. The old man. How do we put him off? He died. And we was and we were circumcised. Spirit and soul. Spirit, soul, and body. Circumcised. He died. And all of that sin, the, the, it was cut out of there. Is that right? Yes. Glory to God. So now... The old man, you done put him off and his deeds. So, now, do you know what he's saying here? Once the old man died, he don't want to commit nothing, good or bad. He just dead. He has no desire for goodness or evil. He just dead. But now the spirit that raised up Jesus is going to raise him up. Right? This is slow motion salvation. He raised him up from the dead. Read the, read the uh, next verse, the 10th verse. And I've put on the new man. We, done, we put off the old man, and we put on the new man. Now, where was, what was the old man? The old man was our body, wasn't it? So who the new man? He got to be a body. Hello, if the old man was a body, then the new man got to be a body. That's why he's called a man. Hello, come on, are you working with me? Amen. Glory to God. And have put on the new man, we, done, we have put him on, which is what? Renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. This man been renewed. Come here, Jesus. This body, because see, he may look like Kwame, but this is Jesus in the flesh again. This flesh has been renewed in knowledge. Of Christ. Read the next verse. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew. Oh, wait a minute. You mean when I look at this man, there's no nationality. Mm. Yes. There's no Jew. There's no Greek. What else? Circumcision nor uncircumcision. There's no, 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 no circumcision. People that's been circumcised or uncircumcised doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Barbarian. Scythian, mm -hmm. bond nor free, mm -hmm. but Christ is all and in all. Okay, so Christ is in everybody that is born again. It belongs, it's him now. So when, when Nicodemus came to Jesus and, and said, how can I be born again? Nicodemus was looking at the kingdom. Jesus said, if you're not, if you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom. So that's why the world, when they look at us, they don't see the kingdom. You got to be born again. I got to be born again to know I'm looking at Christ in my brothers and sisters. I got to, I got to be born again to see Jesus. Come on. Are y'all hearing God? To see him in you, to know that that's Christ I'm dealing with. Glory to God. When, 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 um, when Sapphire and Ananias stood before Peter and they told that lie and died, Peter said, why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? They thought they were dealing with Peter. Hello? But that body that they was talking to was Jesus. That was God in the flesh. Come on. It was God in the flesh. Are you working with me? It was God in the flesh. So where is the sin in this? The sin is in the soul. The soul takes the body of Christ into sin. This is the new man. He said, now put him on. In other words, agree with him. And when we agree with him, we become equal with God in character. You understand? Clap your hands and tell him thank you. The, the question is, how do we sin against our bodies 
and the body belongs to Christ, we usurp authority. See, Jesus will not usurp. He's not a usurper. Jesus will not force us to do anything. He will not force us to live holy. Just like God didn't force Adam. He didn't build a fence around that tree, a wall around it. Amen? He just told him not to do it. And so what the Lord, because we're being tried and tested, we're being tried and tested. So um, if we decide that we're going to sin, God is not going to stop us. He's not going to stop we, if, if, if If we don't go too far, he may chastise us. But he's not going to force you to stop sinning. If you want to sin, if you want to sin against the flesh, if you want to take Christ's body into sin, that's what the scriptures say, didn't it? It said we join Christ, the members of Christ to a harlot. If we want to do that, then he's not going to stop you. He's going to tell you you shouldn't do it, but he's not going to stop you. You have to want this. That is your trial. That's the, the body now is your tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, don't use it to, for your own pleasures of the world. Just like he told Adam, don't touch that tree. This body is supposed to be for the work of God, to glorify God. Didn't Jesus say, glorify me so that I can glorify you? Jesus is in our flesh. That's how he glorifies God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Are you blessed? Come on, give him another praise. <laughs> Pastor Leverage. Hallelujah. It's really so good to be saved, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I sat there and I just listened to God. You know, listen as he explains and how he's getting deeper inside of the present truth. He's getting deeper. And it's, 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 it's doing something in us. You know, you feel yourself anchored. I, I, you know, you just feel anchored. A couple of weeks ago, I heard Clifton talking about how apostolic order just makes you feel secure. You know, and that's what this word has been doing with us. It's making us just know that we know that we know that Jesus Christ is inside of us and is indeed Lord. The Lord started out this, this service a certain way with this prophet. And I want for us to know that this really is just treasure out of heaven that God is giving and feeding to us. This is really, God is really just, 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 just giving us the best of what he has, you know. And we are just allowing, I want us to be settled inside of our spirits. If we need to stop moving around, we can do so. Because it's a serious time. In terms of what God is doing with this, with, with, with this reformation, it's a serious time. For those of us who have the Holy Ghost and, you know, we've been playing around, it's time to stop. It's time to stop. The message has shown us very clearly, you know, we can't fault this body. We can't fault this body. We just have to agree with God. That's all we have to do and this word will change us. For those of us who are seeking for the Holy Ghost, we have not sought with all of our hearts yet. And that's just what the Lord has said. He said, we just need to stop playing around. You know, there's no way that we're going to seek after God with all of our hearts. And, and, and God doesn't come and see about us. You know, so, so, so we, 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 don't, we, don't want, we don't want to make the altar a cheap thing either. And we don't want to make the altar a joke either. You know, so if nobody wants to come, that's fine. You know, that's fine with the Lord. And that's fear also. But if you are serious about walking this thing, if you are serious about not wanting to go to hell, if you are serious about what God is going to do in these end times, and you need to make it right with God, saved or unsaved, come to the altar and let us pray. Come and let us pray. Some of us have been struggling with sin, really struggling with sin. And, and, and some of us know, some of us know that we have the Spirit of God, but we don't, we're not just letting go. You know, this is a time. Today is the day. 
hearken to the voice of the Lord. So if you have the Holy Ghost, you know what I tell God? I don't care what people think about um, this flesh that is at the, the, the name George Devers is attached to. I don't care about that anymore. You know, what I care about is God. Will my obedience to you or my actions just delight you? You know, will, 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 will you just find joy over me because of my submission and my obedience to you? And I don't know how much longer God is going to plead because I feel the ministry like it's taken off and it's going somewhere at a speed. And sometimes we believe we are in something because we can see it, you know. But let us make sure that we are part of what God is doing. You know, let's not get left out of this thing or get left behind. So if there's somebody who needs the Holy Ghost, you've heard the Lord, you know you don't have God's Spirit, you need the Holy Ghost, come and let us pray with you. But come with a heart that God, I, I just want you today. I, I want you more than I want anything else. Lord, I've come many times before, but this time it's for real. I'm bringing my heart to you. Take my life. If there's somebody here today that that is your heart's cry and that's your heart's desire, come to Jesus. Come to the altar. If there is a sin that you know you've not turned over everything to Jesus, you know you've not given all to him, you know you know that you're in a backslidden state, there's no other way to put it, come to Jesus today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another person? There's somebody else that the Lord is beckoning to your heart. Hallelujah. For those of us, you know, the others of us, we just need to, you know, just block out the distractions, close your eyes and focus on Jesus. You know, focus on the Lord even now. Hallelujah. That if there's somebody at their seat that really just need to pop up and say, God, help me today. God, I've been hearing you. God, make today my day. You know, we are waiting on that person. Where did that person? Hallelujah. Hear my humble cry.
Somebody who wanted something from Jesus, he was a blind man, and he started to, he heard that Jesus was moving, Jesus was passing, just like how Jesus in this, is in this place, and he wanted Jesus' attention, and he started to shout out, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, and the guys around him said, be quiet, just be quiet, don't disturb what Jesus is doing. And he said even the more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know? And um, the Lord asked for him. And they told him, hey, the Lord is asking for you. You know? And then when he came to Jesus, Jesus said, what do you want me to do? You know? And he said, I want to be able to see. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. So we've come to this point where we say we want something from Jesus. And we're at the altar. And the Lord has moved our hearts. And we have seen Jesus move in the congregation. We have seen Jesus move in the word. We have felt Jesus move inside of our own hearts. And we want something from Jesus. Today, we're just going to cry out to him just for a few moments. From the bottom of our heart. From a broken heart. From a contrite heart. To say, Jesus, have mercy on me today. Jesus, come and see about me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, I don't want to go through the door the way I came in. Because I heard you. I saw you. I see my nakedness. I see my helplessness. And I need you. Is there a heart at the altar? A heart in the auditorium? A heart that is viewing this service. I just want to say Jesus. 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 Let's call on him a couple of times. Jesus. 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 From the bottom of our hearts. Let's call on him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Hallelujah! Jesus! Oh, 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 God! Jesus! Come say about your people, Lord. Come say about your people, Lord. Come say about your people, Lord. Hear the heart of your people, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hear the heart of your people today, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are in this place, Lord. You are moving from heart to heart, Lord, and you are dealing with hearts, Lord Jesus. You hear the hearts cry to you, Lord Jesus. You hear us cry to you, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Lord, it's such a serious time, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, it's just such a serious time, Lord Jesus. We cannot hear so much from you, Lord. And do not walk away from our lives, Lord. 
Help us, Jesus. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Remove every facade, oh Jesus Christ. Oh God, remove every mask, oh God. Oh Jesus, we stand before you naked, Lord. Oh God, remove every pretense, oh Jesus. Make us real, oh God. Make us real, oh God. Make us honest, Lord God. Make us honest, Lord God. Move anything that would be hypocrisy in our own hearts, oh Jesus. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. We do not want the same word to turn against us, Lord Jesus. Oh God. We want to embrace all of what you're saying to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you for the preciousness of your word, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing inside of our hearts, O oh God. We thank you for what you're doing inside of our lives, O oh God. We thank you for what you're doing inside of our church, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for our sisters at the altar, Lord. Father, we ask, O oh God, for a special touch today from you, Lord Jesus. Father, they've heard, Lord, and they've come, Lord, and they've knelt before you, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Restore, Lord. Renew, Lord Jesus. Strength, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Awaken, Lord Jesus. Set a fire, Lord Jesus. Awaken that thing on the inside, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, bring that heart in agreement, Lord, to what you're doing inside of these lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the glory. All the glory, Lord Jesus. All the praise. All the honor. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It is no secret. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you.
times of time bring out the new another day another day is through someone slipped and fell someone slipped and fell was that someone you was that someone you you have long forgotten you may have lost the rest is not for 